Well, hello friends. Welcome to Groover, Texas, my hometown. Um, like some of you, I'm sure I was getting a little stir crazy. And so we decided to quarantine at my parents' house for the week. And so we came in and so I'm doing my Facebook Live from Groover, Texas, a small farming community in the Panhandle of Texas. Now, if you don't understand Panhandle or where that might be, um, you see, this is the Gambler Jeep. This has been around for Groover in Groover as long as I can remember. And there is Groover, where that star is. My granddad used to always say, if you're gonna hang a map of Texas, Groover's where you'd put the tech. So, now you know. I'm gonna take you on a tour of my hometown. So tell me, if you were to take us on a tour of your hometown, um, what is your hometown? What would you show us? I would love to hear in the comments kind of what you love about your hometown and where it is. And maybe you're like my husband who was born in Florida but calls Massachusetts home even though he's lived in Texas longer than anywhere else. I don't know. We can all call home whatever we want in all different forms and fashions. but. This is the place that shaped me. It's the place that I've told you about. So I'm gonna take you on a tour. So come and join me. You'll see the place is pretty quarantined. We social distance and don't worry, I'm not staying at my parents' house. We're staying at an empty house. And so we're still doing all of our social distancing to take care of one another. So if you're ready, let's go take a look. So over the time that I have been at IBC and particularly women at IBC, um, I have regaled you with stories of my childhood, whether it's farming or playing basketball, but one story in particular um, I have always shared with you is that I still hold the record at Gruber High School for the 300 meter hurdles. So of course for our first stop, I wanted to give you proof that I still hold the record at Gruber High School for the 300 meter hurdle. So here's my name. Here we go. It was in Austin. Still pretty excited about it. It's only been 23 years, but this may be the sole reason I brought you on a tour of my hometown. <laughs> so for our next stop, this is what used to be the varsity gym. Um, we have since built a new gym, but I played in this gym right here. And this spot on the free throw line was where a lot of hard work happened. This is where I had to make 3,000 free throws. Um, this is the spot where at the end of every practice we would collect around the free throw line for our coach to determine whether or not we're going to shoot. Um, I mean, whether or not we're gonna run. Um, but the thing is this gym brings back so many memories for me. Um, I can look there and know that my parents sit over there. Um, my uncle's name is on the wall. I worked in the concession stand back there. Um, I ran a lot of ladders and drills in this gym. And the fact is when I look around, I can easily say that these walls shaped who I am. I mean, there were some really good days. We had a lot of victories where we would stand in the circle in the middle and celebrate our victories. But there were just as many, if not more days that I went home crying because I felt like a complete failure. But it was those good days and bad days that turned me into who I am. Um, whether or not I had successes or whether or not I had failures, I'm now a fiercely competitive hard worker because of um, the work that I did in this space right here. And the fact is, um, these walls that we're in, they can shape us in any way. They can shape us for good or for bad and we get to choose how they're going to shape us. I mean, I could have decided that I hated my coach and I hated basketball and I gave up and quit, or I could have decided you know, to keep going and push through and be able to put a record on the wall for um, the product of hard work. And the fact is the Holy Spirit lives within us and, and when we look around at the things that are shaping us, it can either be the fruits of the Spirit that come out or it can be bitterness and anger and frustration. And so these walls are gonna shape you somehow or some way, but how are you going to let them shape you? I mean, the walls that you're in right now, in your own home or whether you're traveling to work, your circumstances are shaping you, but how are you gonna let them shape you? For success or just for your own failure? All right, so I'm gonna retract a little bit. So maybe it doesn't mean that you're spelling out your own disaster, right? I mean, the thing is when we're in circumstances, we 
get to make one of two choices. We can either take our circumstances and try to control them and work them out and make them everything we want them to be in our own power, grin and bear it and just get through, or we can actually just surrender our circumstances to God and we can trust him to do all of the work and to use it for his glory. Because you see, when God controls our circumstances, they don't bring fear and insecurity. God brings freedom and God brings hope. And so now Kate and I are sitting in this brand new gym that the city of Groover has built. And the city of Groover didn't just um, have a fundraiser and build this. Um, they have windmill farms outside of town and on those windmill farms um, they use the income from those windmill farms to build this incredible new gym. It's a pretty cool one, isn't it? Yes, so when they did that, you see farmers long ago made the choice to sell their land, they made the choice to sell it to the wind farms and now their decisions affect how the kids of the school are experiencing their high school and middle school days now. You see, because when we make choices, we affect other people. Our choices and decisions shape the people around us, just like my choices shape this one, right? <laughs> so what's something during quarantine that we've been doing together every morning? Watching devotional. Oh, yes. So we've been tuning into the daily at 8.30 every morning um, with Barry and others who are leading that. So what? Have you learned anything from that? Um, that Noah was on the ark for about a year. A year. Can you believe that? So Barry talked about that when we started in Genesis, how it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but then after the flood and they were still waiting for the waters to recede, um, they were in the ark for a year. What if we were stuck in our house for a year? It would be a nightmare. <laughs> it would be a complete nightmare. Um, do you think it would change us? Do you think we would get along really well, or do you think we might have some fights? A lot of fights. A lot of fights. Because you see, those circumstances are shaping us. We get a choice on how the things shape us. And so I am looking around, and I get to figure out what um, what's going to influence her, what's going to shape her. And I can either make it for God's glory and for Kate's good, or I can just control whatever I want it to be in my own comfortable way. So what do you think is shaping you? How even are your choices shaping others? Do you think we have an obligation? So here's the thing. I'm going to walk through our trophy case. This is a symbol of a lot of successes that have happened in this town. We have had some amazing successes, as you can tell. One of these I could stop and probably find that was our basketball team. Because, you know, successes shape us quite a bit. They encourage us to go forward. They encourage us not to stop. They encourage us that we are doing the right thing and and successes can make a really, really big difference. It's when we see trophies like this, we just, we want to keep going. We're inspired. We're around people who are succeeding. And the way of the world says these gold trophies mean everything. But you know, the fact is 23 years later, it's probably not the successes that have shaped me. A lot of the things that have shaped me have probably been my failures too. So welcome to my church. This is probably the place where I made most of my failures, if I'm honest. And it was in this pew um, where I confessed a lot of sin, where I confessed a lot of the mistakes I made. It's in this church where I learned about the character of God, where I learned about his grace and his forgiveness and second chances. Um, this church has been a part of my family for generations. My great-great-grandmother bought that stained glass window up there of Jesus. So our family is pretty known in this church, but you know, being known by people um, as something special, that, that's not what saved me. Um, have being a fifth generation member of this church um, didn't save me. It sure shaped me. It sure gave me a foundation of Christian families. 
But the fact is I had to figure things out on my own. And it was through a lot of failures in this very space that I began to understand that. You know, this is a small church in rural America, and it's easy to forget about the farmers and the ranchers of rural America. I mean, we're um, not thought of the Yale and Harvard graduates who are gonna go and change the world, but we are also known as the salt of the earth, and I kind of think ranchers and farmers are the best in the world. Um, but you know, the world doesn't, the world doesn't always think that way. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, the disciples were kind of in the same position ages ago when Jesus chose them. You see, the disciples, they were fishermen who um, came from tribes that were some of the first, whose ancestors were some of the first tribes to disobey God. And so um, they weren't an intellectual guru. They weren't the, the very highly educated Pharisees. The disciples were fishermen from backwater parts of Israel. And yet Jesus came and found them and he staked his entire reputation on them when he chose them to represent him to the world. And you see, by the world standards, they had probably had way more failures than successes. But just like I was talking about earlier, when we go out on our own and try to do um, all the things our own way, the world's going to define it a certain way. Um, we aren't able to do things on our own. The fishermen were, the disciples as fishermen, they were not equipped to go and tell the world about Jesus. And I don't feel like I am equipped to bring about some radical transformation. But the fact is, Jesus doesn't call us and then leave us there. Jesus shapes us. We can either allow the world to shape us or we can allow Jesus to shape us. And the disciples were equipped and called by Jesus. He did not leave them on their own to do things on their own ability. He went with them. He equipped them. He gave them his presence. He chose them just like he is choosing you. Knowing all of our successes, um, knowing all of our failures, um, knowing that most of the time we try to do things on our own, he's still choosing us. And so what is shaping you? I mean, it might be successes. It might be failures. It might be the foundation. It might be your legacy. What are you allowing to shape you? And how are you allowing that to shape others? You see, this place shaped a lot of me. And now I've grown in my spiritual journey so much since I left this church. I mean, it was actually on that stage that I first sang a solo in front of the whole church and completely embarrassed myself. And there are a lot of, um, like I said in this pew and next to my first boyfriend in youth group and good gracious, I don't even wanna to have to think about all of that. But you know, what I have, um, what I do remember is that even though there were a lot of mistakes here, um, the church always had its arms open, just like the Lord always has his arms open. And so no matter what has shaped you to this point, your past has not disqualified you. Your past hasn't even qualified you. Jesus is the only qualifier. And so let's just allow him to shape us today. So I really hope you've enjoyed this little tour of Groover, um, taking a look into my past and enjoying this time. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, it was fun to come and quarantine here in another town. Uh, it was nice to get in some different walls. And as you see, we're still social distancing. All of these places have been empty. So it's all about who you know and who has the keys. And yeah, so I knew the right people to get into the building. I hope you know the right people to get into the building. And the fact is Jesus is saying he has a building waiting for you. He has walls where he can shape you into a certain space and he invites you in. So what's shaping you today? Thanks for coming on this tour with me.